everyone welcome to this update video i hope you're doing well happy sunday it is the start of the brand new week and we're going to be looking at what's going on across the north atlantic and we'll also be talking about the hurricane season el nino is going away and la nina is on her way so uh we are just 34 days away from the official start of hurricane season uh and may begins this week so very soon we'll be saying next month is the start of the hurricane season but hey uh, let's take it one day at a time here so we can see that there is a lot going on in parts of the u.s there is that ongoing severe weather event there's been uh tornadoes which have resulted in so much damage across some areas and alongside other impacts such as a lot of heavy rain flooding and so i really hope that uh, everyone is doing okay right now. I know that some persons have lost their homes, their livelihoods, and that can be very difficult to deal with. But my thoughts and my prayers are with everyone in the U.S. that uh, is currently experiencing or have been affected by what is unfolding there. Now, as we look out into the Atlantic, we can see that much isn't really happening. However, offshore Africa, well, parts of Africa going offshore, getting quite active will soon have those tropical waves rolling off and uh, every few days in the hurricane season there's uh, there's usually a new tropical wave making its way off africa doesn't guarantee that it will develop but these waves propagate towards the west and they are important for the caribbean because i mean they can increase the rainfall which is needed by some areas especially those that have been experiencing droughts so that's the benefit. The downside, they can develop into tropical cyclones and do some significant damage. But for now, uh, there's no active tropical cyclone out there. And as we zoom to the Caribbean, there is still some activity moving through some areas. There's still that southwesterly flow as we're seeing for the ABC Islands, parts of the uh, Leeward Islands as well. So there's likely to be some rainfall activity around as we head through today and then uh, head into the southern central american countries such as panama it is getting quite active in the area also in the eastern pacific now let's look at the rainfall forecast for today here we can see it from euro there could be some additional showers in parts of jamaica so maybe some spots in cuba but for much of central cuba especially it should be on the dry side uh, similar story the bahamas cayman islands as well Hispaniola, there could be some additional periods of heavy downpours. And for Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, uh, Angola, St. Kitts and Nevis, Ceiba, St. Eustatius, St. Barthelme, St. Martin, uh, even for Antigua, Barbuda, there could be some showers around as we head through today. As I showed you, there's that southwesterly flow, uh, some moisture in the area, and then for the rest of Lesser Antilles, maybe a passing shower at the maximum. ABC is not expected to experience much today in terms of rain, but there could be a passing shower or so. Northern South America will remain active. Colombia, parts of Venezuela, and sections of the Guyanas as well. Uh, some additional heavy downpours along with those thunderstorms are most certainly possible along the Pacific coast of some of the Central, uh, uh, the Central American territories. Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, even heading up to parts of Honduras near El Salvador and Guatemala. So there could be some showers around, uh, some downpours also possible for Belize and Mexico along the Caribbean coast. So there could be some showers as we head through today. But not only that, it has been so very windy. Many of us have been feeling those stronger winds, those tropical storm-like wind gusts as well. Let's head on to the wind forecast. And here we are seeing it. All these darker blue shadings uh, are indicative of winds going up to around 25 not so so with much higher gusts for areas such as the bahamas turks and caicos islands uh, cuba as well the cayman islands jamaica hispaniola even headed towards puerto rico uh, and the virgin islands some of those wind gusts could be well over 30 going up to 40 miles per hour and let's not forget about uh central america just offshore especially in the vicinity of the bay islands Winds could really kick up, especially later tonight, uh, with those gusts reaching tropical storm force wind speeds. So it's going to be yet another windy day across much of the region. For the eastern islands, winds at the maximum, some of those wind gusts could be up to around, say, 20 miles per hour, 15 miles per hour or so. Now, as it pertains to the hurricane season, we're looking at the sea surface temperature map right here. And we can see it's so warm right now across 
uh, the tropics, the Caribbean. Of course, it is warm all year round. However, temperatures are above average in the region. The Gulf is also warming up, especially in the Bay of Campeche. We can see that uh, those orange, reddish shadings are popping up there. And as we look out into the main development region, it's also getting so warm. Temperatures up to 26, 27 degrees Celsius, and especially near the Lesser Antilles. So this is the fuel that's sitting and waiting for those tropical waves. Uh, as long as other environmental conditions are conducive, then yeah, we would certainly, uh, we will certainly be seeing development happening soon and very soon. Now we're looking at the anomaly here. So this is uh, this what I showed you guys just now. That's the actual sea surface temperature map. Now this is the anomaly map, which is just showing how much the temperature is varying from what is typical. So the orangish, reddish shadings indicate that temperatures are above normal, which means that they are warmer than average than what they usually are. Meanwhile, the blues indicate below normal temperatures, meaning that they're cooler than what they should be. Now, let's zoom in a little bit here. We can see in the eastern Pacific, look at this uh, little streak of this blue shade. And that's in our ENSO region. ENSO stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation. So we're still in an El Nino. We're heading on to the neutral phase. And after the neutral phase, once temperatures continue to go down, we're heading into La Nina territory, which is expected later this year in the hurricane season. So it's very warm above average temps in the Atlantic. Meanwhile, in the Eastern Pacific, the Enso region is cooling, and that isn't good news because La Nina typically favors more development. Now, just to reiterate how warm temperatures are across the North Atlantic on a whole, we've got that bold black line, which is representative of 2024. We can see that orangish line, that was for 2023, or is for 2023 rather, and then those smaller gray lines indicate previous years including years such as 2020 and 2005 two of the most active seasons in recorded history for the north atlantic now on the y-axis the further up these lines are that is indicating warmer temperatures now we are seeing that this black line is higher than all of these other lines going back to 1981 so the temperatures right now across the north atlantic since the start of the year have remained above average we don't see it uh intersecting the line for 2023 so temperatures are very much above normal and they will continue to get warm because we're heading into summer however uh, again the warming is just so substantial across the north atlantic and that is what aids in rapid intensification of tropical cyclones it's going to be an active hurricane season and we could see a lot more systems headed towards the caribbean the u.s and even Central America. But of course, guys, I'm here to keep you posted on all that is going on. That's the purpose of my channel. That's why I post videos every single day, even now in the off season, because I am dedicated to keeping you guys updated on all that is happening. But that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this updated video, and I really do hope you found it to be very informative. However, if you have any questions, do feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you when I can, and remember to always be weatherwise.